primary ignition. This is Star Wars. Look out! Yes. You may fire when ready. From the bright center of the galaxy, I'm Greg Scottback, and you're listening to Core World News. Your Honda News Service providing in-depth coverage of the latest stories from around the galaxy. Now, a new segment rundown for March 20th, 2022. The final installment of Starlight Beacon Bulletin. Now, here else to discuss the latest High Republic comics. All right, thank you very much, Grex, Adam, and Grant. How are you two doing today? Doing great. Doing all right. Fantastic. Cool. I hope everyone's doing well at home as well. Thanks very much for joining us this week. Uh, a little bit later this week. Apologies uh, for getting this out. It's the way it goes sometimes when you're on a, you know, small space station hurtling around the mid rim. Um, we're going to wrap up uh, phase one of High Republic. This week, this is uh, the final installment. We're going to talk about uh, two comics. It's going to be a five issue arc, I believe, of uh, yep. the High Republic Marvel main run, and then two issues of Eye of the Storm, which is like a little mini series about the Eye, our friend Marcian Rowe. Yep. Um, I'm really excited to do this. There's some really exciting things. I've been sort of not reading this stuff until we do the episode, so mm. I'm experiencing it with you. If you're just listening to this because you want to find out what's going on in the High Republic and not read, I'm right there with you. This is me experiencing these these things happening. But we've had a lot of parallel storytelling between the novels and Fallen Star. And then um, we had the IDW, like Younger Reader Run. We did that last week. And then this week we're going to catch up with the uh, the main run comics. And I'm really excited. This is we're going to cover some fun ground here and really put a bow on phase one of the High Republic, and we can start talking about what's going to be, you know, what our thoughts are for what happens next. Because I'm waiting with bated breath, and I've got some ideas, yeah. and I hope uh, you guys do too, Grand Adam. Yeah, definitely. Oh, you're, and they you're gave us some. Go ahead. Go, go ahead. I was just, Adam. I was just saying, they gave us some pretty big hints in in this mini series about where we're going. Right? It's yeah. this little mm-hmm. kind of half step between phase one and phase two. Yeah, I oh, the yeah. storm was like the one that made my eyes go real wide. Mm-hmm. Same here. H- huge developments at the end of Eye of the Storm, the two-parter. Um, yeah. And I, th- I think we should mention we're probably going to spoil most of what's in Eye of the Storm, oh. and there's a lot oh, all of in it. there. Oh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll spoil everything that's in there. Because um, like, so if just... you're not reading this comic, yeah. you don't know what's going on in High Republic. <laughs> it's yeah. like this is yeah. crucial, crucial information. Even this if you're reading quint- the novels, you don't know this is happening. Quintessential backstory for Marcian Rowe, the main villain of the the yeah. first phase, and uh, as well as backstory of the the levelers, these these mysterious creatures that have been stalking the Jedi in the last few yeah. novels and comics, the yeah. the series that run yeah. up to this. Yeah, I mean that's what I'll say. It's like it's it's one of those things where it, it, I I as a person, all three of us do the same thing. It was we consume all of the media. Right, all of the Star right. Wars media. This is built for us. Like the yeah. the High Republic is <laughs> built for us. For the casual Star Wars reader who's maybe just reading the main novel run, you can definitely do that and get wide swaths of it. But if you're really just like, hey, you know, in that last book, it was interesting that we only saw half of what was happening in Starlight Beacon, and where was Avar Chris? <laughs> like, like, right. Right? like, well, what happened in the other half? He was here. And the other one was like, it's, it's, it's like, you really do have to read all of this stuff to get the full picture or right. listen to our podcast or listen to our podcast. <laughs> yeah. Like if you don't know what Magrock syndrome is or a storm seed or the nameless, we're going to get into that right now. And that yeah, just, it sure. just seems if you're, if you haven't been reading the material, the, the books, the comics, then you, you might be unfamiliar with these, these new concepts in, in the, the world of, in the new galaxy of star Wars. So it's pretty cool, like pretty cool new concepts. And, we're going to spoil that all right now just because there's so much laid out in the eye of the storm and then also in the high republic yeah uh, the end of that series as well the main right run. it was a uh, high republic episode 11 to 15 i think words yep. the um the, were the episodes or the issues uh why don't we talk about that a little bit so we're, we're following keith trennis is our main protagonist in this run do you want me uh, to name check all the creators Yes, please. Yes, you have yeah, it there, I think we should. Give credit where credit's due. It is our oh, final absolutely. Star Starlight Beacon Bulletin, so we should. Yeah. Be. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, we're going to talk about, as Ben mentioned, High Republic issues 11 through 15, uh, Jedi's End by, uh, I'll try to do this, Scott Jean T. Uh, Anadito Lopez Abrutov Story Maher 
Alzaba, Morales, Langham, and Noto. Thank you very much. And thank you to those creators. Uh, yes, thank you're you, thank amazing. You. These uh, like yeah, Kevin so Scott much knocking joy. it out of the park with these. Like, yes, just incredible writing. Incredible. I think um, there's a beat. I will talk about it towards the end. I think, in the, uh, yeah, I think when the final issue of the 11 to 15 here, um, just the skier holding off the levelers and just that I almost felt that cinematically oh. in a way. Yeah, I was like, yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, this would be great in a film. Give me, yeah. give me Jedi, give me more, you know, non-human Jedi, Jedi, and uh, and and have them explore space and explore tense moments in new ways. And I think you get a lot of interesting character work with Skier in uh, yeah. these 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 issues here. Yeah, and I just a special shout shout out to Ario Anandito, um, the artist who illustrated some of the issues that last one who i i on our on our social media there's a there's a scene with the uh with uh with our main protagonist and uh one of the nameless that will forever haunt my dreams <laughs> uh, right yeah you posted that we yeah. should i'll try and get some of this art up this week on um on instagram and uh and try and hunt some of that down because it's amazing i was I can't figure out on my iPad how to do a screenshot. Um, so yeah. if anyone out there wants to contact me on our Discord channel and tell me how to do that, that'd be super. Because uh, it's not the same as a phone. I don't know. Uh -huh. Anywho, there's just like the art of Skier. There's one where Skier just smiles like he's like proud of Kiev. And it's just like the coolest art. Like, I don't know how many like smiling Trandoshans we get with just like very <laughs> pleased Trandoshans. But the yeah. art, it just like it sings. And I mean, yeah. that's the thing. Like we don't have live action of any of this stuff so for me these comics are the high republic like i love a novel right. and i have these things in my mind but like it's the closest thing we have to live action are comics and it's cool yep. i've you know i've only really started reading comics because of this podcast um yep. you know i casually you know read some comics in the past and, and been through some stuff but not like you two guys but it like that now it's so great because i'm like there's a bar chris there's Keith Trennis. This is what the, you know, the sheer of the eye, you know, of the <laughs> hill looks like. Right. And, um, yeah. And what what, a, you know, the actual, you know, all the cultures and stuff. And yeah, I can put a face to the, all these names. And um, I really love I really love reading these comics. It's yeah. great. And these sort yeah. of disastrous scenarios, the, the attack on Starlight yeah. Beacon, the stocking of the, the by the levelers like the, it, it's it's it just lends to the comic medium. Like it's just that, that those big spreads, yeah. the sort of really cool effects moments of the, the levers sort of contorting force energy, you know, it, it, it just looks so good in the artwork in these comics. And so definitely check these out. If you're into, if you want to see star Wars in a new way, because I feel like that's exactly what these comics do is they right. explore Jedi conflict, you know, fighting in, in just totally new way. Uh, totally way, totally new antagonists and a new yeah. relationship to the antagonists because yes. they're not your Sith antagonists that have this like singular vision. Actually, I'm going to get into this right now. Let's because, do it. Yeah, let's do it. Because I've been thinking a lot about this and maybe I mentioned it a little bit last week, but like we're not talking about terrorists. We're not talking about like, you know, virtue, uh, virtuous or some, some sort of like ethically bound antagonist. It's like, well, they're doing this, but they have the right things in mind. Like right. these people are sociopaths. The yeah. Nihil are sociopaths. Like the eye of the Nihil is the Joker. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, yeah just wants to watch bad. the world burn. Really. Like, yes. Right. They don't see yeah. themselves as righteous. Right. Like that's no. the kind of difference. Like not like, like Martian Rowe and you see it. And we'll talk about the next thing. Like you see the world through his eyes. Yeah. And it is. It is scary. Frightening. Part of me wishes that they would released that first issue of, of Eye of the Storm, which we'll talk about, like at the beginning of uh, <laughs> of of the High Republic run, right? Yeah. Because I'd be like, yeah, yeah, now I get it. <laughs> now I get it. Now I get who this yeah. kid is. And they were sort of just like, oh, he's doing kind of weird things, and maybe he killed his father, and like, you know, he's got these ideas, but we don't really know why. And they they kept a lot of close to their vest, but then like when you start seeing that that illustrations through his eyes, it's just like death. Yeah, I mean, he, yeah. we everything when, was death when the High Republic was first announced, and we learned the Nihil were the Nihil. Um, we kept making the nihilist joke, right? <laughs> right. Yeah, we're not that far off, right? Like, like, right. Really, like, like, they just don't. They want nothing. Like, they, they really believe in just, nothing. Nothing. Yeah. 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 They hate authority, yeah. and it's just 
there's a constant chain of betrayals within their own ranks. It's it's chaotic, much like a storm. It's very apt that almost mm. everything connects to the the sto- a, a tempest in okay. some way. Uh, I wish they cool. made a Nile named Uli. Be like, oh, that's Uli. He believes in nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it must be exhausting. Yeah, that, that's, that's are we really not a missed sure opportunity? That, like, how yeah. is that not an actual? It's got to be in there probably. somewhere. Must have missed yes. it. Oh man, yeah, I gotta go back yeah. through all this stuff uh, yeah. to do that. But um, all right, let, let's um, we, we're we're I like how we're parallel storytelling both of these things. But um, why don't we zero in on some main characters for the main run? So we've got Keith Drennis, we've got Avar Chris, and we've got Skier. Are, are kind of there any any comments about any of these characters grant i know you love avar chris more than any other jedi what did you see I, in this? It, this i mean in these i think uh what these four issues i feel like they uh they show that as infallible as you thought avar chris was in just her being the light of the jedi in the eyes of all those around her uh, she she falls she is tempted yeah. by the dark side in these issues and yeah. It's huge. You you kind of never thought she could be tempted by the dark side. You thought she was almost like a Yoda or like a Mace or like a Qui-Gon. Like you really felt like this character would never falter. And she does. And it yeah. takes a young Jedi Knight to to save her, to, to bring her back to the light. Yeah. And so that was really, really interesting. It was fun to see that moment. And uh, yeah, I, I really love that. But um, I mean, what's what's yeah. so fascinating is you're right. Like we get our Avar Chris falling, right? To the mm-hmm. to the dark, yep. at least for momentarily, and we get and we get Skier, right, like losing the force and 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 oh, so cool. also going dark, even though he doesn't have a connection. What's amazing is that there's something beautiful about the storytelling because Keith Trennis takes both of those mentors yeah. who fail and becomes like the brightest star, like the brightest Jedi, yes. right? Like yeah. it's kind of really beautiful. It almost made me cry when I thought about sort that. Of, sort thinking, of redeems was, them both. Yeah, yeah it's exactly. Cool. Like, you may have fallen, but you created something beautiful in the universe. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that that's an overarching theme so far for phase one. It's like you have these shining beacons of all that's supposed to be great. This like these heroes that are established and everyone knows um, in their prime. And then you've got this whole group of young Jedi yeah. that are coming up and following him and they're looking up to these people. But they're all discovering that this this these heroes are fallible. And they yeah. make mistakes and things go wrong. And how do you reckon with that if you're a young person coming up and you still idolize them, but you want to try, you want to be them, but you want to be better. And I'm, I'm not phrasing this well, but that's essentially what it is. It's just coming no. to terms with your heroes being fallible and how do you, how do you, you know, overcome. But what's interesting, Ben, is I think you're getting at something because the question has always been in my mind is like, how does this connect to when we see the Jedi at the end of the High Republic, which is really just when we start seeing them at the beginning of, of episode one, right? And yeah. I think a lot of it is because a lot of the Master Jedi, we would assume, are these young Jedi, right? Who live through what we assume, as much as the High Republic, they live through an era of war or an era of terrorism or error or something, right? So maybe that's why we get to the Jedi that we get to in episode one. Right, that are more involved uh, in the yeah. universe and more involved in this, and so it's just really interesting, right? Because we get this idea that that what they see is that their masters were not prepared for yeah. a galactic threat; they just weren't. Right, because the established masters in the higher public live through an era of peace, and they just right. don't know. You know, it, it's always hard to deal with uh, unexpected uh, antagonism, unexpected, you know. Mm-hmm you know problems as we're yeah. all, and, and instead of some political yeah. slow game with the emperor plotting you know, behind the scenes this feels different this feels like the jedi have been blindsided by like a crippling terror in the levelers and in some of these these plans by martian row it just feels like it's very uh it, it's in the open it's it's in the light the, like the, every the, there's attacks on valor there's attacks on starlight beacon these 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 strange creatures yeah. have come to now warp their minds. It's like they are getting hit from all sides and it's, it's, it's in broad daylight. It's in, you know, it's just on the galactic stage. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. Whereas Palpatine did everything behind the scenes. It was all, right. you know, puppetry. It's like, this is, this is totally different. And I, I, I got to give it up to the writers for that. I think it's really yeah. smart what they did in terms they're of throwing that. everything yeah. at you. It's like yes. they're they're It's coming from all angles. You can't mm-hmm. stop it. 
they don't follow any rules. Talk about like bioterrorism, like even in our world, like, you know, you don't use chemical weapons. Like the, the first thing they do is you, the Nihil you do is you right. use chemical weapons. Yeah, that's, exactly. that's our calling card. Of course. Yeah. And, and uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I was just saying at the beginning of this, like Tarek and Sarah are nearly turned to husks and they're all feeling raw and emotional. Like, oh my, we're losing Jedi. Like they're dropping like flies. And yeah. what's cool about these comics is Avar, they they steal a path engine, they retrofit the the Ataraxia with it, and Avar and Keeve and 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 Skier are going to strike back at the yeah. secret hideout in the Nile yeah. in in no space, which was so cool. I was like, let's go! Yeah. Like, I was pumped yes. for that. I was like, yeah, we're sending Avar the tip of the spear right into no space, right into that secret hideout. I yes. cannot wait. Perfect thing to explore in the comic space, honestly, because yeah. it's going to yeah. yield a lot of action. Which, again, I just want to stress, like, for those who are just reading the books or just reading the comics, like, they are doing giant plot points everywhere, right? Like, yes. that we we spent so much time in no space in the first novel, especially, yep. and I think in the second one, mm -hmm. and that we don't even get the incursion in no space in that novel, right? Like, it happens, right. like, like we just know Avar Chris shows up at third act of, of, of Fallen Star because she's off having this adventure in no space. Like, it's, it's really great. Yeah, and uh, I think, you know, it's... It's great to see that. It's great to have them use it. They're now they're starting to cannibalize the Nihil's uh, weaponry to work it. And I think, you know, if there's any sort of, well, I, actually, this is what I wanted to do. In one sentence, this is what happens in these five issue arcs. Uh, Avar Chris is obsessed with capturing Lauren D. They think she's the eye of the Nihil and this is going to like end the war. Um, and, you know, so she's, they're just following Lauren D and she does use this, the cannibalize this path engine to go here to finally capture Lauren D, which they do. They're coming back to Starlight. Starlight at this point is under attack and then all their priorities change and Lauren escapes. That's pretty much what, you know, it, that's the, the broad strokes of what happens. I mean, right. plot wise of these five issues, it's, it's, it's not a lot of plot when I was reading right. it. It's, it's a lot of character, right? There's, yeah. A it's of, a lot of character yeah. and a lot of interpersonal dimensions. And so for me, when I, when I saw them, diving into finally doing this incursion into no space and they're they're like home base the great hall i think they call it right um, yeah so what i think is happening with this sort of like sociopath element i think it's like this this book this series is like seven i think the nihil like as much as they don't really have any objectives they just want to inflict wrath and take down the jedi and the thing like they're making the jedi break their own rules and we're yeah. seeing that a lot. But the thing is, I love seeing Jedi break their own rules. I know it might not make me a good fan, but like I really wanted Avar Chris to cut like Lorna D in half. And I love when they lose control and start like actually striking back. It, maybe it's like yeah, it's... revenge prawn or something, but like they, yeah, I just, I mean, I know Avar is supposed to be this is like yeah. shining light, but to see her fall and then just see her start wrecking, like because they just, the Jedi keep taking L's. I can only watch Jedi take L's for so long before I'm just like, will you just strike back and kill I know, these people? But I feel like in this in these issues, they kept taking more L's because they were sacrificing their 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 delight, right? But I mean, no, Matt, if I mean, she had killed Lorna D, she would not be absconding with a bunch of refugees out into space I mean, right now. Orba Lid would be alive. <laughs> it's it's the Batman like thing, right? Yeah. It's like, well, yes, he's got yeah. this ethos and he doesn't kill people, but if he would just kill a couple select people, then thousands of other lives would be saved. Right, and then he becomes a ooh, almost sort of real bad. Then he becomes a dictator within Gotham City, and then he's making everyone's life worse because that is the slippery slope of that. Like because then he starts if deciding, he killed the Joker, well, I'm going to kill a mugger. A dictator, I don't know. I, I mean, I have comics for you to read, sir. Um, yeah, it, it's it's <laughs> fascinating though because it's like it's like what is what what poses more of a threat, the Sith or these agents of chaos? I'd really almost question. argue these agents of chaos yes, because. Absolutely. I would argue I, Sith. You know, when they, I know. Yeah. What's interesting is we'll we'll talk about Sith, but it's yeah because it's galactic domination and it's even more threat. I guess it's even more because severe, then everyone but... becomes. I I don't want to. Yeah. I, I don't want to get super political and tie this into current politics, but I feel like. I, I want to mention. Putin, I feel like the I... world is so horrible right now because we've yes. had people defund education and do all these Sith-like things that have led to this world where yes. we just. Ben, I'm sorry, you're gonna have to bleep it where we just shit on each other constantly because we're just anyway. So <laughs> we our Bantha, world sucks Bantha because we've had so many Sith Dude. lords in power. Yes. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, yeah, you're yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah, you're right. But it's yeah, chaos <laughs> is the real evil. I mean, the, you're talking about well, yeah, autocratic. There's still const constructs and how we make money. But, the but Sith, like, I mean, like the Sith the chaos world, is chaos. Like a sc scorched Earth tactic. Whereas we see in these comics, these the 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 uh, the Nihil are relentless. They will destroy their own assets. They'll destroy their they'll they'll destroy everything. Their own uh, their base own people, of operations. Their own, base, their own people. Yeah. Everything. Well, they believe in nothing. Was yeah. the was the attack on Valo and the the great hyperspace disaster worse than the thirty five years that the galaxy lived under dictatorship by Darth Sidious? No, no, I don't think I don't think no, I don't think it statistically it is is bad, but I feel like we'll see what Martian Road does at this point, but I feel yeah. like the leveler has has caused excruciating pain to the Jedi yeah. in a way that Sith would just it would be a fast death for Jedi. It seems like it's a more terrifying threat for the Jedi than the Sith. It feels like they would they would nobly in as a noble warrior, but they would just fight the Sith and and they Yeah. Now Whereas they don't know what to do with these. Levels. It's also living in fear the whole time with no hope, right? Like right. if you're a civilian in the galaxy and the Nihil are out there, you're constantly living within fear. But if you're living within the construct of the autocracy that was the Empire, then you feel like, oh no, we're being you know saved in both places, unless your planet was being strip mined, which many were. Now I have a mind bleep that actually connects to our current, or not current, but our politics where I think we're separating these two evils out when they are actually really intimately related to one another. And my supposition is that Darth Sidious would not have risen to power without Martian Rowe. Because well, in, right? in retrospect, but yeah, uh, but now it's uh, just as a just, certain uh, like final context. order. Yeah, like yeah. oh, we're gonna we're gonna police the galaxy. Right, we need order because look what happened in the past. We didn't have order, just like we wouldn't have yeah, a yeah. certain ex president or a certain ex president without certain events in early twentieth twenty first century America. You're being too vague now. <laughs> All right, we wouldn't have we, didn't, we wouldn't have Trump without nine eleven. Okay, I was gonna say, I mean, we wouldn't have Putin without the fall of yeah. USSR, like. Even Putin fears chaos, right? Like, right, 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 right. He, like yeah, he went around organizing it, air yeah. quotes here, through, you know, through killing, auto, you know, uh, oligarchs yeah. and, and bringing everyone and throwing them in jail and, you know, doing terrible things. But yeah, even he, you know, he was like, he was viewed as a savior because he took them out of chaos. Yeah, so. exactly. Yeah. And I think in the, in, in my examples, like evil begets evil, right? Like, so, so I, right. I, I think. I think we're trying to have a starting with like which is worse in reality I, I don't think we could do that because i think they're one so gets, tied yeah. into one one another yeah. um we, i learned something yeah, yeah, yeah was, in, in, in in a, a, that was yeah oops. no that was great i'm just thinking in a moment in a moment to moment what's more threatening to the jedi i feel like oh, yeah. right now martian row and the, some of the, the weapons he's in, under his employ i feel like yeah. those things are terrify the jedi chemical weapons levelers yeah. Uh, secret bombings, like these massive explosions, like to kill thousands. Like it just those the losses of li life, I think, affect yeah. the Jedi in a huge way. And whereas, you know, it was uh, it there was a lot of loss of life, you know, Order 66, all that stuff was just terrible. But it, it just. But it happened in a, in a snap of time. Yes. In it, reality, because yeah. because it was all behind scenes. Right. Like, and I think that's yeah. why and I think, Ben, you had said this earlier, like I. I or maybe it's great. It's one. It's not me. That's all I know. Is that is that they did a great job of introducing a different type of threat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And and I think that's why it's so consumable. The higher public stuff is that yes. like I'm like this is something we haven't seen in Star yeah. Wars really before. And and you know the the other thing I'll say is that Ben, I agree with you. I like seeing the Jedi but go yeah. against their teaching. Maybe for different reasons, but because it's good storytelling, right? Like that's yeah. where there's interest, right? Because right. if you just have good people being good to their core all the time, yeah, it's like, boring. It's boring, yes. and and it's gonna get so so. And I think they've the, all the different author, author authors have like when you see someone slip slightly to the dark, you get it. Like you you like I was with Avar Chris. I wanted her to be better than that, but when that happened, I. 
I got it. You know what I mean? I'm like, yeah. I, I, I wouldn't have been better than her in that situation. I, sure. I for sure would have struck down Lorna right. D. And then we like, go to see Lauren, Lauren D escape later and kill Orbelin in the, the command center for the Starlight Beacon. Like, yeah, because is yeah, he it's, dead? It's, because he's just slime. So can like, I guess that's true. Bullet can, through the yeah, helmet, it, like he's just slime. Uber, I'm right? Yeah, yeah, I should be. Yeah, maybe they can kind of like you know Hoover him up and he'll be fine. <laughs> well, I mean, he has like the, I mean, the suit, but like, can't he? That just sort of keeps him in a like, more. Contained. Yeah, yeah, like state. Like I, I'm like, how do you kill slime? Like I don't know. Right. I don't. Right. right. Loved but, him. Yeah, that was just tough. But a lot of cool stuff with Skier in these issues. Just his yeah. the the Magrock syndrome and how his he's he's slowly losing his connection to the Force and at the same time, uh, his lightsabers to, he's stripped from him by Abar early in the in the comics and Keeve sort of brings him back into the fold as a Jedi again and uh and just at the end he's able to resist the levelers right um, because torsion of the, the force point. because he cannot he's yeah he's slowly losing his connection i thought that was such a genius that's such so a good. genius concept i really really loved that concept from kevin scott i uh, i almost wish that was set up a little earlier i, I think this is the first time we hear about the magrock syndrome is is the first time we hear about it but we know something has been maybe going the issue on. before and then the second issue you get the payoff for wow. yeah but we yeah. know something is going on with been has been going on with skier for quite that's a while right he's he, he has been acting yeah. a little but it, uh, it was yeah. revealed in this compared. in this arc. yeah so um, I think they had that in their back yeah. pocket. I think they kind of knew that's they were great. Going that and, way. and he hasn't yeah. really lost his connection to the force, but the way it's like his mind is fighting off this disease, which makes him essentially become feral, uh, like yeah. a, a feral uh, Trandoshan, which makes sense. Um, right. Like that he can't use the force while he's sort of fighting off this disease. Like he could. Yeah. I, mean, I, I think he can let go and then use the force because he there is a sign, you know, that thing where he, he starts like just like cleaving through the hill which i love okay. and so, then and he uses the force while he's doing that so it's like cables uh psychic uh, telekinetic right. abilities <laughs> keeping the uh the techno organic virus away from taking over his entire body he's not really aware he's doing it but it's just there and then when he taps into his his, his ability the techno organic I, so i started that off like i was going to be a nerd and then I just was like, no, this is actually a perfect analogy. So he has well, to yeah. use his telekinesis to to stop the virus from spreading. And that, uh, yeah. that sucked. It's, I thought I was going to make fun of myself, and I just made myself the giant nerd in the world anyway. So, no, no it, it didn't. Was cables very, from death. Um, yeah, it was great. Very important. Was, Thank you. Stop talking for a while. Someone else take over. No, no, I absolutely love what you're saying there. I'm just, <laughs> I'm actually just trying to like game out how the Jedi are going to fight back against the levelers. Like, yeah. Yeah. not the Magrock syndrome is such a unique thing to skier eventually the jedi are going to have to be able to fight back against these things do you guys have any ideas for how they could fight back against the the well, nameless I, as well non -Jedis. Them, called? well yeah obviously like non-jedi people non-force users like buddy system i think would work like all jedi have a non-force user with them like when they're trying you know going against these people you know fighter i think one plot line which i i skipped over there is that all of the jedi have gone back to coruscant and been like, let's figure this out, which I think yeah. is a really cool plot line there. Mm -hmm. They're just like, nope, yeah. we need to we need to address this. Let's figure this out. We're done like chasing our tails in the dark. Like, let's let's go. And, and figure I this have out. a feeling they had, they didn't leave for several hundred years. Um, so it might be, right. Yeah, yeah, I think that's why we get to. But I, I think, you know, what's interesting is in in the old EU in the New Republic era, we actually get the Jedi teaming up a lot with some of the pirates. Do you remember that? Like some of the mm -hmm. some of the people. So I wonder if they're going to have to forge alliances like they did with the huts, mm. right? To to help them protect them, where there's just kind of the because it doesn't seem like the republic has a really strong army or force, right? Like it just seems well, like not some, anymore. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, maybe I should gloss over this now. We're 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 getting there. The first half of Eye of the Storm, there's two halves, there's two issues, right? The first half gives us um, Marcian Rose's childhood and the birth of his peoples, which mm -hmm. we can get into later. And the second half is what happens after Starlight is destroyed and yeah. sort of what Marcian's doing afterwards, which is great. You don't get that in any other thing. This is the yeah. as far forward in the story and plot of the High Republic that we get. Yeah. Um, and one of the 
one thing we see where he, the planet where he gets the levelers from or where he's getting more levelers from the, not the same planet where he got the original one from. Right. That's right. Um, yeah. And that was interesting. Um, and then he seems to have some crystal that he puts in a wand and it like, he can, yeah, it's like the crystal. hound of Baskerville or something. It's like, yeah, he's, mm, he's able yeah. to control these hounds with the, uh, this right. wand. The and we do see the levelers. Crystal, I don't know what that is. Yeah. We see the levelers. They are essentially like Uzi hounds with tentacle mounts. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that wand is key to stopping the levelers, right? Yeah. The Jedi have to get yep. that wand. It's, there's the MacGuffin yes. for phase there two. Is. There you right. go. Someone uh, needs to get that wand and someone needs to power their... Fo- I think Avar needs to use that thing and channel her energy because she has the most far-reaching... Fo- yeah, yeah, exactly. And she could that song could spread throughout the galaxy and, and affect all those levelers, right? Like this, right. It's got to be some sort have, of widespread... Right. How would it affect them through a positive force? Like if a positive force had it instead of a... So or that crystal in the wand is red. Could it's someone purple, not purify that? Could someone not purify that crystal? Or, you know, like mm-hmm. Ahsoka did in the Ahsoka novel? Like, is it, you oh. know, cleanse that crystal? Purple. Is it purple? I didn't look I at it. I think it's red. I think it's red. I, I could be wrong. I'll check. This right is now. vital, vital fact. Because if, if it's red, I think someone needs to purify that crystal, basically. Like Ahsoka yeah. did. Uh, if it's if it's purple, prisoners. we know because we it could be a, a it could be a, a kyber crystal for all we know, right? Like right. it could be because it's all connected are to there, the force. Right? Yeah, and if it's a purple crystal, it's we purple. all know it's purple. So we yeah. know who, whose kyber crystal that is, right? Uh, Mace Windu's. Yeah, it's got to be Mace Windu's. Like, yeah. like, like, how do you not do that? What issue is that? The second issue, Ben, or the first? That's got to uh, be second, right? Be... Second, yeah. Here, can you see it? I blew it up on the thing. You can't really Got see it. it. No, nah, really, but I'm trying to come up with the page. But yeah, I, I you know. Okay. It's, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's not the last oh, yeah, chapter. It's the, it's the second to last chapter. But um, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. obviously uh, Mace Windu confirmed. Crystal confirmed. Yeah, there you go. Well, we should it's mark that time. Magenta, so it's sort of magenta. So it's like a, it up. Yeah. Yeah. Regardless. Uh, yeah, that that's kind of interesting what they have there and um but the the other thing that we, we find is there's another layer to his plan which didn't make it to the novel somehow in that he created these uh storm seeds and essentially he throws them out into the outer rim and if you're in hyperspace and you come within any sort of range of these storm seeds which it feels like he's seeded to the whole arc of the galaxy somehow uh your ship explodes yeah so he's cut off the outer rim from the was it ten sectors or something like that. I I didn't I don't know. Yeah, he said the ten, this, ten, sectors ten sectors of the outer rim are now right. uh, so, uh, are well, being blocked by these storm seas. Right, and they know this because the you know there was a Republic force, a military, and uh, Lena So sent them all out, and they all exploded. Yeah. So. That Sullustin is like, oh, do you want to? I was waiting for the Sullustin to be in the room and be like, how about I create a force now? Like, do you want yeah. a, a military now? <laughs> yeah, right. Um, from uh, Rising Storm. Uh, yeah. And, you know, they might need to. So they don't they don't really have any defense at all. Anymore. No, I, I wanted to say we called it. I think Grant might have called it. But like, so when we first heard about the great hyperspace disaster, right, or the great disaster, we were speculating what that might be. And I'm pretty sure it was you, Grant. It wasn't me. So maybe it was Ben, but I think it was you, could've Grant. Talk- it could have been. But I you, I think you had talked about um, basically losing hyperspace. Yeah. Do you remember that? Of not being able to uh, use yeah, hyperspace. I think, yeah, that might you know, be That was definitely Grant. I think it was Grant. I knew it was Grant, but I, I, he's always so humble with this stuff. Um, but like that's what we got to at the end of the phase. Not to all of it, but we've got an, we've got ten sectors of the galaxy that you cannot traverse via hyperspace anymore. It sounds like you could do yeah. sublight, but that's not going to work, right? So like, yeah, I, I'm so excited for where this is leading now. Like this is great. This is why I hope we skip into the future, because imagine if we've had like a decade where an entire right. ten sectors have been cut off from the from the from the from the republic like that's fascinating it is fascinating yeah uh, yeah that that's stuff. and we, the battle paths or the bat what, what is it yeah i guess early in yeah, the in part one of the eye of the storm mm-hmm. we see how asgar had his how he won over the nile by having his son you know fight against you know all the the best fighter pilots that the nile had and and <laughs> they have mari Senteca activate the battle paths and and Martian's able to like just 
just do these little like micro jumps micro around jumps. in the battle and just take out every fighter. And I'm waiting to see the other the other you know shoe drop on that in this I guess this next quest of the Jedi yeah. phase. I'd like to see those battle paths initiated. Well, I, I think we saw it in the end of the first book, right? Yeah, yeah, it was in the it was in the end of the first book. Yeah, yeah, um, that first major battle they had head to head, and the Jedi triumphed. And that's why I think you know Marchand's like, well, I can't fight them head on anymore. Like we've got to do this surreptitious um, battle. But, but yeah, what's interesting yeah, is I, there is there's a reason in the first book they did it more like suicide bombing right like because they weren't like yeah. they weren't like martian roach is just like jumping in and out of space blasting people oh, yeah. so if he's training them to do that we might get especially if we get a time jump maybe we've had five years where where the where the nihil have been training yeah using this technique right yeah. right yeah maybe martian was uniquely trained and he definitely had a connection with mari santa she's gone now right she's, she's yeah she's yeah. yes one with but, the horse yeah, so I don't know if that was something that only Mar uh, only uh, Mari could uh, do herself, but Maybe. that I, I just shout out to the comics. Um, the scene just like the panels are just yeah. his thumb so, on, on the trigger, mm -hmm. and he's like, "Okay, Martian, you can stop now." And he's just like <laughs> thumbing the trigger and just like yeah. destroying more yeah. people. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I guess we're we're just in the eye of the storm, which is fine. Like, I think these two books are so these two comics are so intertwined. So, yeah. um, I, you know, I, I had talked about earlier, but like we get in the first book, like we really get his origin story, right? We get everything up until yeah. his, his rise. But part of what we see is we see him as a young boy. And I mean, we can talk about the history of, of his species, but when we get him as a young boy, they will ever so often cut to first person, how Martian Rowe, sees the world yeah and yeah. he sees it in red and he sees everyone as Skulls. desiccated corpses like it's yeah. that's yeah. literally how he sees the world including his parents and yep. oh yeah and even in mari she's right. just like yeah dead eyes like yeah oh man the one yeah there's one where he looks up at his grandmother and his father and they're yeah. just skulls with yep. holes in their skulls and like I, yeah, yeah, it's amazing. And he, he's a sociopath. Like, he just really is. Because we get the point where he, he, like, his father pushes his grandmother off a balcony. It's yeah. a great, great family lineage, by the way. And, yeah. and the grandmother <laughs> Good falls, falls dead next to him. And he's just kind of like, huh. Uh, like, right? Like, no yeah. reaction to watching his grandmother just crash next yeah. to him dead. Yeah, it seems like his family in particular they they no longer see the humanity or you know in anyone they don't they sort of there it's a i think at one point the grandmother says like he is the he's the best of us he's like the thousand years of you know of generation yeah. thousand generations of you know everonians who have been su surviving you know like surviving. yeah he's the edge of the blade basically yeah That's sharpening yeah. for thousands yeah. of years yeah you know, yes. super dark story by the way i mean they, they grew up on a very stormy planet right so that's why we get all these storm metaphors through for the nihil yeah but, and then at one point a great storm totally destroyed all the cities on everon and the everon everoni had to leave the planet and uh yeah, but in and the meantime, it was just, it was like kill or be killed. Generations of like war. Yes. yes. Yeah, they were just like, and then, you know, and they even showed one where I think it might have been that grandmother pushing, like, her husband off a platform. Yeah. Like, yeah. they're on these tiny platforms. It's like, and no one trusts anyone. Family kills family. It's just like, as soon as you show weakness or, it's like, it just went down a really dark path where it's just like, well, this is what chaos could lead to is, what you know what we were talking about earlier i mean it's it's a society is it, it where if where if psychopathy was the genetic trait that right. was like like was survival well, that survived right like if you're looking at like very simplistic um evolutionary biology right like if that was the most successful trait was psychopathy it was this species right like yeah. and that's why we get to marcia and row and everoni which it's funny uh, loosely translates to caretaker uh, <laughs> yeah. Sure. yeah, yeah, in their in their language, which was which was super interesting, uh, given how antithetical it is to how they've evolved. Like they are, right. <laughs> they are, right. you know, only care for themselves. You know, it's, right? It, it mutated to mean I am the caretaker of myself, <laughs> right, <laughs> and yes. nothing else, which is kind of the opposite yeah. of caretaker. Yeah. 
Um, but that yeah, was cool just, just to get a little history of the planet and, and that sort of yeah. stuff was, was yeah. great. Oh, it was great. A whole nother culture, a whole nother species, a whole nother like planet, a whole nother biome. It was, I love that stuff. And I love the look yeah, of the Eberoni. They kind of look like yeah. the, the, the drow from, uh, you know, Dungeons and Dragons or mm. if you're familiar with that, they, they look almost like that. Um, race uh they look really cool i love just i love like you yeah. said how he sees red that is so cool like yeah there's yeah. just a lot to martian that i think is 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 fascinating for 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 his character in particular just it's just unique concepts all around it's a great villain it's a villain i was a little like i'm not 100 percent sold on this character part of it was listening to the audiobooks um no shade to mark thompson who does a wonderful job reading those um but I just was like kind of whatever about it. And and the end of that and then this comic, I'm he's I'm fully on board for Marcian Rowe, like following him yeah. through to the next thing. Because it's like, as we talked about, like Darth Sidious, I don't like, but I get it, right? Like I you you get when he's talking, like I totally understand the the thirst for power and for wanting to live forever and how that leads that person to right. where we see him. Marcian Rowe as as Ben, he's a dog chasing cars. Yeah, he is. Like yes. he is. He's just like yeah. I mean, he is. He's just the Joker. He really is. And he's the closest thing we've seen to the Joker in, yeah, and there's, in there's, Star Wars. Yeah, there's there's a pretty defining line at the end of this too, where he's like, uh, "What did you say?" He says like, "I hate people in power." Um, oh God, it's such a good line. We'll find it at some point. But it's like, yeah, I hate people in. It's like I hate people in power trying to tell me what to do. Um, and he when loves I, seeing people yeah. out of power, right? Like, yeah, you know, like, but yeah. I, yeah, but yeah, yeah, but they're, but those people like, are without it's, power. It's, he's so. not, he's nihilist. He's an anarchist, right? He, he doesn't want to rule really. Like, he wants to rule his little sector. But he, he, it's like he doesn't want to rule, but he doesn't want anyone else to rule. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, right. That's that's his thesis statement, which is like that. How does that work? That's great. Like, you, you don't want to be king, but you don't want anyone else to right. be king. Yeah, uh, the the quote is my favorite oh, yeah. thing, Master Jedi, is when someone who believes they are strong realizes they are weak, and the reason is me. Right, and the ultimate selfish line I'm talking about is the end of the scene two in the second issue where he says, "I am all that matters, and I do not like people who do not matter, uh, <laughs> telling me what to do." <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I am yeah. all that matters, and I do not like people who do not yeah. matter, telling me what to do. And that is that is his mantra which, which is his mantra but notice in nowhere in his mantra is like but i want to tell people what to do his, his literal thing is yeah, that like yeah. i just don't want anyone to tell me what to do and that's all yeah. my goal is, is to stop yeah, anyone he's, gonna he's son of to sam do. dude like he's yeah he's crazy yeah um yeah. totally bonkers and yeah yeah and i just before we you know get off these issues I loved the planet the force planet where the levelers yes. are like oh I yeah yeah totally different those we didn't get a name we didn't get a name for it, but it was just so sacrifice. cool. They had to break that, like they had to break that outer kind of uh, atmospheric wall uh, to, to get yeah. into, into the planet using the, the, the sheer or those, those, those Nile that he, he chose to, to accompany him. And, uh, and just on the planet, just how vibrant it was. It felt like the force yeah. was in everything there, yeah, which was so cool. So I almost want to return to that lot. planet. I almost want, I would love for Martian to like retreat there after he's lost and yeah. have the last Jedi go fight him there or something. Like, cause I just want to see more of that planet. Like, yeah, I, such a cool planet and such a cool concept. It kind of reminded me of the, the sort of, you know, duel the fates, uh, sort of like, you know, uh, a script that, that never was, uh, uh, that Colin Trevorrow had, had, had created that planet that was almost like a force planet where the seasons yeah. were changing rapidly and stuff like that. I felt that with this with this planet to a degree where it felt like I would love to see a planet where you have all these biomes in star Wars, you know, Everon is a tempest planet, you know, you're, you're getting all these biomes. Why not have a force planet and not mortis, but like a force planet that's teeming with life. Like that is a fascinating idea. Yeah. 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 It's great. Yeah. That's my favorite. Planet. It was super cool. Yeah. One of my favorites. Um, did we talk about these? I think we've kind of covered all yeah. the stuff. Yeah, we're good. Talk about Eve. I mean, we didn't really spend too much time on Keeve, except she has a great story. And she, it turns out she's going to be the one that's end up carrying her masters on her shoulders. Yeah, I yes. think I think I think through all this, she's she is 
not the chosen one, but the chosen one of this arc, right? I feel yeah. like that's what we're going to learn is that. And and Ben, I think you had mentioned. I think I think this is a story of the youth that we're not really we weren't paying attention to, right? We were paying attention to the constellation of those three Jedi in the yeah. main book, but I think really it's the story of the youth. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we've seen you yeah. know Stellan had his bad times. Elzar Man had his like dark side moment. Um, and he's coming to terms with that. And Avar had her dark side moments. So now, I mean, I wonder how that brings them together. I do still, I, I, I love the, that constellation, the like the, the main heroes of this run. And I'm curious to see how their story arcs evolve. But, you know, the real heroes, it's feeling like, is going to be Keith Trennis and Vernestra Rowe and Reed right. Silas. Um, they are, yeah. you know, they're, and they're Ram generation. Ram yeah. Jump. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, they're all pretty fantastic Jedi uh, and fun to fun to watch. Um, so I'm looking forward to all of them coming together. And uh, Court, our man Court. Yeah. He's going to be there. Yeah. And we uh, just have to wait till September 27th to yeah. find out where what's going on. Yeah. Right. So that's the thing, y'all. Like, we're they, they said the fall is when phase two is going to start. So we got a few months where we're going to get back into the comics the original trilogy, um, obviously Obi Wan's going to come out then, but um, we'll be back into a more familiar galaxy far, far away uh, for yeah. the summer. Um, and we decided earlier on next week we're going to talk about directors, like because I don't know, it's we're always thinking about the future, right? And we love Star Wars, and Star Wars is very much a biological entity it's like growing and learning and trying things and experimenting and some things work better than others and um you know so where do they go next like what happens maybe not next year but in two years from now like who are they thinking about hiring that's going to tell a story that the fan base is going to take the fan base to a new place um and make them happy and delighted in a new way um, because they can't keep telling the same story over and over again. That's not what Star Wars is about. It's modern mythology. And so what's it gonna be? So there's a lot of good filmmakers out there, and we're all gonna uh, come up with some filmmakers that we want to um, you know, maybe you know, think about who would be great to pilot the next evolution of Star Wars. Yeah, so that's what we're gonna do next week. So feel free to hit us up on um Discord and talk to us if you've got. Uh, I need some ideas. So if you've got some directors yeah. you'd love to see or writers um, to make a Star War, let me know. Hit me up. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, yeah. If you got some, well, well, we can do some fan picks or like Ben said, we might steal ourselves, but we'll give you credit if you. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. All our we links. Are... Tell, tell our tell our listeners about the impetus for that too. Is we were we were, before we hit record, we were thinking about you know just really you know interesting choices for you know our artistic direction for a star wars film and yeah. it can be auteur but it's mainly to move the needle like and we thought about david lynch being initially hired or, or talked to about return of the jedi and how how interesting that would have been how that would have been yeah. a sea change maybe for yeah. the the films or yeah. or currently if you had someone who was who the david well, lynch of of today do a star wars film how that could really shift the how yeah. star wars is perceived in the broader yeah. you know audience and you know today we had a bit or last couple of days we had a bit of the what if the the, the kind of what if colin trevor trevorrow thing that's what we've right. talked about quite a bit so, so yeah so that just kind of thought of like yeah who who might be out there that could direct a star wars and like you said ben move the needle yeah 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 pull it in a fun new direction we've seen uh fabro he's done an amazing job with the mandalorian um we had robert rodriguez working on uh boba fett but really doing a Favreau script. Um, so yeah. it's like, you know, Favreau can't write every Star War for the rest of eternity. You know, it's got to be something else. And frankly, I, I want something else just because I like different flavors of ice cream. Um, yeah. Yeah. It would we'll, be fun to sort of, you know, game out what that film might look like, too. You know, I mean, like when yeah. we when we bring up our directors next week, it'd be fun to maybe like just dive into maybe what that Star Wars film could be could be it, given their yeah. body, body of work and what they're yeah, known. what we'd expect or like to see for sure them. yeah exactly. yeah even if just tone right but yeah right. exactly yeah. yeah awesome all right y'all it was really great um thanks for listening to this i hope you're feeling up to date on the high republic um you know get the comics and read them yeah. uh, if you haven't they're fantastic they're beautiful and it's uh, very fresh storytelling with a bunch of really likable interesting characters for sure um, and uh, so. 
farewell starlight beacon we fairly knew we, we barely knew <laughs> you hardly knew you yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, I don't know what we'll call the next uh, High Republic <laughs> thing, but it'll be whatever we name or it on after. The shores we'll... of Eram. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but whatever we name it after will surely be doomed. So, yeah. <laughs> right, whatever we pick, it'll be the next thing to ball. Yeah, like, a Coruscant tide tip. <laughs> yeah. yeah, try tip. Um, all right, you're all great. Um, we really appreciate you listening to us, and uh, we we'll do. talk to you next week. May the force be. This is Grex Kondak signing off. For the latest breaking news, follow at Core World News on Twitter and Instagram. Thank you and good night. Remember, the force will be with you always. Yeah.